Hi guys. Um, so trying to do things a little different now. Um, I noticed that we're having a little bit of a hard time with um, the inequality solving them. So I figured I'd go through them one more time and then uh, hopefully that'll help you a little bit with being able to complete um, the quizzes and uh, these uh, Google assignments. So as you can see, I've got um, a new little setup here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll walk through the steps with you and then there'll be points where you can pause the, the video and, and try some on your own. All right, I'm going to walk through four of them, right? Kind of speed through the first two um, because they're repetitive. But then the last, the, the next two, three and four, I'll slow it down a little bit because there's some important information there. And then numbers five and six, I'll let you try and do it. And then you can uh, see me do it. And hopefully, uh, you know, that'll help you to see whether or not you got it if you're doing it correctly. All right, so let's move forward here. All right, uh, first thing, all right, question number one, right? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve uh, this uh, inequality and then I'm gonna graph it, all right? As simple as that, okay? So uh, let's see, I'll uh, screenshot this. I could just write over it and I'll probably disappear. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Anyways, right, so here we have our equation all right where we're trying to I'm not equation I'm sorry an inequality where we're going to use uh, uh, the way we solve equations in order to isolate the variable uh, so that um, you know we can have a graph of the solution set so first things first you see that the variable is being added by three right so we're gonna subtract by three and what you do to one side you must do to the other Right, so the additive inverse property says those cancel. All right, I bring down everything that's left over. I have my W representing all of the numbers of the solution set. I bring down my sign, and five minus three is two. Right, so then we're ready to graph it. And when we graph it, okay, um, we got to determine whether the circle identifying our number is open or closed because there's no line underneath it we leave it open and because it's a less than symbol it's saying all all of the solutions are less than two for this inequality of w plus three is less than five all numbers less than two will satisfy that inequality they are all part of the solution set so all of these numbers and on and on and on that way all the way uh past negative four even all of those are part of the solution set. So that's the graph for number one. Okay, so we're isolating the variable based on what we've done before. Okay, uh, one is part of the solution, solution, zero, negative one, and all that good stuff. Okay, so that's number one. All right, let's look at number two. Number two, here the variable is being subtracted by three. Okay, so to isolate that variable, I got to use inverse operations. Right, so here. I'm going to add by three. And what I, I, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So additive inverse property, those cancel. And I bring down everything that's left over. I have my y greater than or equal to symbol. And negative four and a positive three results a negative one. So I got my negative one identified on the number line. And because of this, line right here underneath the symbol that right there tells me that i have to close my circle so i'm going to just kind of scribble in here and this is saying all numbers that y is saying all numbers represent all the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative one so negative one is included and all of these numbers are greater than negative one so this is I'm sloppy, but that's all of our solutions. It goes on and on and on and on. All those numbers, if I plug them back, any of them, into my inequality, they will satisfy y minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 4. It doesn't matter which one of those numbers you choose, from negative 1 all the way to the right, all of those numbers will uh, uh, result in a 
true inequality, all right? So that's number two. Now, number three, you're going to notice something, okay? And we've briefly talked about it. We'll talk about it a little bit more here. But here you see that the variable is on the right-hand side, okay? Now, we're still trying to isolate the variable like we normally do when it comes to equations, okay? What are we going to do to both sides in order to get that G to be all by itself? Well, the G is being added, right, by a positive 8. So that means we need eight negatives. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Right? So the positive eight and the negative eight cancel because of the additive inverse property. I bring everything down. Seven minus eight. Seven positives and eight negatives. I'm going to be left with one negative. I have my less than symbol. And then I have the G. Now, I can graph that. Okay, but like I've said in, 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 in previous videos, it's a little easier to graph it when the variable variable comes first, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, or we could look at it this way. We could say, G, put the variable first, but when we put the variable first, we have to flip the inequality, and now we put our negative one. Both of these inequalities are the same. Okay, that's important to know. Okay, it's not like uh, these are two different things that I'm graphing. It's going to be the same graph, okay? Those are the same, all right? But it's a little easier to graph this guy, okay? Just simply because um, it's a, you can just read it easier and, and it shows a little easier. And your greater than symbol uh, is an indication of what side it should be graphed, okay? But uh, so let's go ahead and graph it. So we can, we it, it's negative one. So I'm gonna uh, put a circle here. Oh, that's not. Yeah, that is negative. Okay. I'm gonna leave it open, right? There's no line underneath here, so I'm gonna leave it open. Okay. And then I'm going to say greater than. Okay, all numbers greater than negative one, right? If I were to color it in. This is really sloppy. You guys can do a much better job than me. But again, both of these graphs are the same. It's saying that all numbers that are greater than negative one will make this uh, solution uh, true for, for the original uh, inequality that we started with. As long as we put a number greater than negative one, it will result in a true statement. Now, if we look at our original uh, solving of the equation, right? Again, that's still true. Negative one is less than G representing all of the numbers, right? G represents all of the numbers, all of the solutions. So negative one is less than all those numbers. And as you can see, negative one is less than all of the numbers. That's part of this graph, all of them, okay? So again, same thing, but I like to flip it so that um, it's a little easier to graph because the inequality symbol is a little more upfront. It's it's a little more straightforward. Okay. Last one before I say now it's your turn. Okay. Now again, what are we doing here? I probably should have put a negative one, but anyways, just to switch it up a little bit. But what are we doing to both sides of this equation? Right. Well, I need to isolate the variable. I need to get that. M to be all by itself, right? So because it has nine positives, I'm gonna use nine negatives. And what I do to one side, I gotta do it to the other. So these cancel because of the additive inverse property, five positives and um, nine negatives result in four negatives. I bring down my symbol less than or equal to, and I bring down what's left over on the right side here, and that is my M. That is showing us the solution set. Negative four is less than or equal to all of the numbers uh, that make this equ uh, inequality true. As long as negative four is less than all of those numbers, it is true. Now, I like to, again, all right, or same inequality. I put If I put the letter first, right, 
my less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. That doesn't look too good. And there's my negative four. Again, these guys are the same. They are the same uh, inequalities representing the solution set. <clears throat> now we're going to graph it. All right. Got to be a negative four. Is it open or closed? All right. This line says, oh, got to close it because the negative four is included in this solution set. So I'm going to get that. Now, am I shading to the left or to the right? Again, based on this guy right here, and again, they're both the same, but this one's a little easier to read because it's telling us all of the numbers that are greater than or equal to. All right, let me, let me clear this out a little bit. It's saying all of the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative four make this guy true. It will be true. If I plug a number greater than negative four into that original inequality, we will have a true statement. Okay. All of these guys, any of them, right? Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and try. Any number greater than negative four. How about one? Nine plus one. Okay. Is five less than or equal to nine plus one? Absolutely. Nine plus one is ten. Five is less than that. If I put any of those numbers on the graph that represent the solution, any number greater than negative four, it will be true. Okay. And of course, again, this right here, just so you can uh, see, negative four is less than all of the numbers in the solution set or equal to. It's equal to or less than all of the numbers in the solution set. And obviously, all of these numbers. Um, represent that because negative four is less than all of them, right? But it's a little easier to read this one, but they're the same thing, okay? Now, I want you to try, okay? So I'm just gonna uh, show you number five, okay? Notice where the variable is, okay? Anyways, you try it and pause this video and then, um, after you figured it out, after you graphed it, do a little number line underneath. See if you could graph it. Okay. And then uh, press play and see if, and, and then I'm going to go over it and see if you did it correctly. All right. So <clears throat> um, go for it. All right. Now, assuming that you did pause it, did the work, now you want to check it. Okay. So here we have our variable that we have to isolate. Okay, so I'm gonna screen sketch it, right? What are you doing to both sides of this equation to get this to be all by itself, the letter N all by itself? You should have added seven. Now what you do to one side, you gotta do it to the other. Those cancel. N is greater than negative nine and a positive seven is negative two. Now, because the variable is set, it's on the left-hand side, I can graph this guy. I'm not flipping anything because what this is showing us that all of the numbers that are greater than negative two will make it this original inequality true, okay? So you should have had an open circle at negative two, and you should have shaded this side representing all of the numbers that are greater than negative two. Okay, so that's how you should have done number five. All right, last one, number six. All right, try that out. And then pause the video and come back to see if you did it correctly. All right, so assuming you did that, you paused it, you solved it, you graphed it, let's see if you did it correctly, okay? So here's my J that I got to, uh, I got to solve for, I got to isolate it, I got to get it all by itself. So what am I going to do to both sides? Hopefully you subtracted both sides by 15, and what you do to one side, you do it to the other. Additive inverse property says those cancel, I bring everything down. So I got a 3. 
18 minus 15, greater than or equal to symbol, and the J. Hopefully, you said, hmm, this means, well, I can, you could have graphed this as long as all the numbers that are graphed in the solution set were greater than a 3. Okay? An easy way to, to make sure is to just go ahead and flip it. It's a little easier to read. Okay, so we have J first, and we're going to flip the symbol less than or equal to 3. Right? So you should have had a closed circle at 3. Right, I'm going to color that in because the line underneath it includes it. And all of the numbers that are less than 3 will make this original inequality true. Okay, all of them, right? Again, this is still the same thing. Is 3, here's 3, is 3 greater than all of the numbers? It absolutely is. All of the numbers of the solution set are less than 3 or equal to 3. Okay? So this right here is the guy you want to really check your work with and graph. Are all the numbers represented by the variable j less than 3? Absolutely. Okay, so <clears throat> if the variable isn't first, just flip it. Okay, so that's that, all right? I'm definitely over my time, my 15-minute time limit. Uh, you can check out your Google assignment and it will reflect what's being learned in this uh, video, all right? And of course, if you have any questions, let me know. I wanna try some different things. Uh, we definitely gotta get some flip grids included and um, I wanna go live one of these days as well. So be on the lookout, stay on your page, uh, continue to check in. RPS at home, that's another uh, good thing to use. RPS at home has English assignments, science assignments, you know, it has all the subjects there. So check that out. RPS at home, uh, uh, just Google it, right? It's real easy. It's on the RPS website. All right. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later and um, stay active.